ನಾರಾಯಣ ನಮಸ್ಕೃತ ನರಂ ಚೈವ ನರೋತ್ತಮ ದೇವಿ ಸರಸ್ವತಿ ವ್ಯಾಸ We're reading from Srimad Bhagavatam 11th Canto, 22nd chapter, text 58 and 59. Shipto va manito sadhi pralabdho syuito dhava dhadita sannirudho va vritya va pariha pitaha nishthuyuto murti ಕ್ಷಿಪ್ತ ಇನ್ಸಲ್ಟೆಡ್ ಅವಮಾನಿತ ನಿಗ್ಲೆಕ್ಟೆಡ್ ಅಸಬ್ಧಿ ಬೈ ಮೆದ್ ಮೆನ್ ಪ್ರಲಾಬ್ಧ ರಿಡಿಕ್ಯೂಲ್ ಅಸೂಯಿತ ಎನ್ವಿತ್ ಅಥವಾಸ್ ತಾದಿತ chastised sanniruddha tied up va or vritya of his means of livelihood va or <clears throat> parihapita deprived nishtuyo nishtuyota spat upon mutrita polluted with urine va or agyai by foolish men bahudha repeatedly evam thus prakampita agitated shreya kama one who desires the highest goal in life kritra gata experiencing difficulty atmana by his intelligence atmanam himself udharet should say <clears throat> translation even though neglected insulted ridiculed or envied by bad men or even though repeatedly agitated by being beaten tied up or deprived of one's occupation spat upon or polluted with urine by ignorant people one who desires the highest goal of life in life should in spite of all these difficulties use his intelligence to keep himself safe on the spiritual platform purport throughout history many of the above mentioned inconveniences have been experienced by devotees of the lord one who is advanced in god consciousness does not allow himself to become obsessed with the material body even in such conditions but rather keeps the mind fixed on the spiritual platform through proper intelligence would you comment something about you you can start uh <clears throat> yes uh, <coughs> so here krishna is explaining to udava um different situations quite extreme as you can see somebody spits on you or uh, urinates or takes your means of livelihood and uh, or being envied insulted neglected ridiculed uh, one should be uh, not disturbed by this because this is as we had in the previous words a result of a uh, the false designation false identity we have with the body and the mind so by intelligence one has to udharet uh, rise on the spiritual platform to the atma because uh, we identify with the body so uh, this is the normal reaction of someone uh, insult insult you accept insult you insult you insult you accept it uh, you're very personal you know, you also maybe react on the same level as they do and, uh, 
make a conflict between the, the people, the nation, the world. You can see now all the world in the same situation as the first place. The only way just to get out of this false ego is just to surrender to identify ourselves that we surrender, surrender the self of the world. That's what it's mentioned to me. This is the only way just to if even they insulted and you put <coughs> urine on you uh, because you are not identified with the body, you don't accept it. It's not the way. Yeah. You see, this is just the, the separate material energy which is acting. Uh, the spiritual energy is different than material energy. You're always going deep, diving into this devotion. And you accept everything for that, just like very good or bad. It's the problems arranged by the Christians. It reminds me, <coughs> reminds me of the story of Jada Bara. <laughs> yeah. So <coughs> he was also being. Uh, accused in uh, so many different ways related to the body. Uh, you are stupid. You are not very intelligent. You are not uh, able to do even simple things to carry the pelican in a proper way. <clears throat> Such a simple thing. And then later on he replied, that uh, <clears throat> is true. All these qualities of the body, whether one is intelligent or not, refers to the body, to the mind, to the intelligence, or whether one is uh, shoppy, fat, <laughs> or thin, skinny, is all related to the body. <clears throat> but because we are not the body, that's why we, are not, we should not be affected by uh, the dualities referring to the body. Intelligent, stupid, uh, fat, <clears throat> fat, skinny. These are dualities referring to the physical body. But intelligence means to not identify with the body. The eternal spirit soul full of bliss, full of knowledge, and the soul has nothing to do with this physical body. So that is being explained in these verses. Something more? But it's not so easy if somebody urinate in this, uh, on this uh, body when, where my soul is, I surely, <laughs> No, not like <laughs> she says she will not she will not take it very lightly if somebody urinates on her body. <laughs> very difficult. It's <laughs> <is> pretty intense. <laughs> <laughs> but then on the other hand, what's what's the difficulty? You just clean the clothes and, and you can. <laughs> I think the, the whole idea is to, <clears throat> as the Bodhi, one has to learn to be tolerant. Mm -hmm. This is one of the qualities of the Bodhi. He is a tolerant. Titikshva Kuranika. Dante Nidhaya Trina Kam Parayo Nipatya. Prabodhananda Saraswati. He spoke that verse. <clears throat> How should the devotee behave when he approaches? the people to uh, present to them Krishna consciousness. Dante Nidhaya Dante. He takes a blade of grass between his teeth and then he is flattering that person. Oh, you are so intelligent. I know that. <laughs> I know you are very intelligent. But uh, just for one moment, you know, forget whatever you have learned and just uh, Listen 
to the words, to the teachings of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So there are so many examples uh, of uh, related to the requirement of uh, being tolerant and uh, humble in uh, spreading Krishna consciousness. <clears throat> Not only in spreading, also just in practicing. Because there will always be people, relatives, you know, worldly friends, they might not like that the devotee practices Krishna consciousness. And they might ridicule the devotee, criticize the devotee. And uh, naturally, the devotee has to tolerate. He cannot be carried away you know, by the uh, uh, criticism of others. Why? Because then he will uh, forget Krishna. He will not be able to concentrate on his practice of Krishna consciousness. He becomes dis uh, distracted. That means intelligence to be, <clears throat> um, what is that fixed intelligence? Stitadi. Stitadi. The stitadi fixed intelligence means one always remember Krishna and never forgets him. <clears throat> that means fixed. So that, that is intelligence. <clears throat> that I should not forget Krishna under any circumstances. And that requires tolerance, humility. Maharaj, when we are, for example, uh, like she gave the example of somebody urinating or, or spitting like we're on Hari now, somebody spits, and then, then you forget, next day you forget the, the face of the person. But if, if somebody, especially from the ones who are close, say some unjust accusation or some insult, neglect, that we remember in the mind, the mind chews it and chews it. And even the intelligence knows, no, this is, this is just mental and it's related to the body and mind, but still it's so agitated that it's, it's difficult. Different natures, uh, uh, <clears throat> Brahminical nature can uh, has the quality of forgiveness. You forget, you forget. <clears throat> it's a Brahminical nature, <clears throat> but a Kshatriya nature, it is more difficult. <laughs> <laughs> they will not forget, <laughs> and they will, uh, you know, punish that person if the behavior is wrong. It's the duty of a kshatriya to point us out or even to punish if, some, if something is unjust. Mm -hmm. Then that's the nature of a kshatriya. He wants to uh, justify it. You know, he wants to correct it. He wants to uh, uh, use his, uh, you know, his, uh, what is it? His strength, mm -hmm. either physical strength, mental strength, uh, you know, to correct the situation, and that's the uh, kshatya nature. And uh, Vaishya, what about Vaishya? The Vaishya, if he's being insulted, <laughs> what does the Vaishya do? <laughs> <laughs> Tries to pay off. The, 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 he will <laughs> cut, cut the supply. <laughs> cut the supplies. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> or high, higher is the prices. Uh, increase the price. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a way of <clears throat> retaliation. <laughs> and uh, Sudo, what was the Sudo do? We start lamenting mostly. Yeah, he's lamenting, exactly. Lamenting, he's yeah. lamenting and then he's looking for another master. Yeah. <laughs> he will work for someone else. Yeah. <laughs> But you know that's a unique quality of a uh, of the of the brahminical nature that they can forget. It's a very unique quality. All the others are more difficult for them. But then again, you know, when these are material qualities, yeah. material goodness, material passion. But as a Vaishnava, as a devotee, we are supposed to cultivate 
whether we are we you know we are of a uh, kshatriya nature brahmanical nature doesn't matter but all vaishnavas despite their nature have to cultivate the mode of goodness <clears throat> otherwise one cannot uh, approach a transcendental platform first one must be situated in the mode of goodness so uh, and uh, that's uh, also part of the mode of goodness as a vaishna to uh, forgive to be tolerant it's the nature of a vaishna so there's a very interesting point <clears throat> i think the whole vanasham system daivi vanasham system because sometimes uh, we tend to mix mix in these two uh, vanasham systems <clears throat> the mandi material vanasham system and the daivi transcendental vanasham system sometimes we are mixing up yes so it's a very <clears throat> very you know, broad field of study to properly understand the vanasham system in context of a devotee you know how he, how he functions in a vanasham society as a devotee as a vaishnava yeah. any other points what would you recommend maharaj in the situation where the mind is so disturbed by strong emotion resulting from any such behavior from others and the intelligence cannot really influence it's just the emotion is so powerful negative and just you know the intelligence tries to <laughs> give good advice but the mind and emotions reject it and we have to use our emotional intelligence <laughs> 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 we don't we, we cannot ignore emotions you know, don't be emotional that, that will not work we have emotions <laughs> <clears throat> everybody has emotions of course gradually they become spiritualized but uh, you know in our our sadhana practice sadhana platform we all have emotions we just have to learn how to <clears throat> how to regulate how to organize these you know, how to recognize emotions that's called emotional intelligence you know how to recognize and understand the emotions of another devotee another person and it's it's a it's a you know conflict in in the relationships if there's a lack of emotional intelligence mm-hmm. if one doesn't understand the emotion of another person then that will uh, uh make the relationship very difficult you know especially we see this in the, in the, in the grihastha life also like if the husband doesn't understand properly the emotions of, of the wife then she feels that he doesn't understand her this is so cold <laughs> <laughs> whenever i express some desire or something he just doesn't care <clears throat> he's just you know playing with his cell phone <laughs> it means he doesn't understand the emotion of the wife <clears throat> similarly if the wife doesn't understand the emotion of a husband there's also a problem and then he <clears throat> doesn't feel the emotional support you know of the wife then he's looking for another emotional support <laughs> so some other lady who really understands me is looking for that another relationship so the emotional intelligence is a very important factor related to relationship relationships not only in household life but in in general in our vaishnav uh, sangha vaishnav association <clears throat> as more we understand the emotions of other devotees as easier it will be to cultivate relationships because emotions are very strong they are the perverted reflection of spiritual emotions mm. <laughs> spiritual emotions are very powerful 
The whole Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu is full of examples related to spiritual emotions. Krishna Prema is listed. The, uh, what's the English word? The, the <coughs> culmination. The is the culmination mm. of all uh, spiritual emotions, the pure love for Krishna. So uh, all these spiritual emotions are being pervertedly reflected in this material world in mundane relationships. <clears throat> so they're very powerful. Mundane emotions are very powerful. Like love for Krishna and uh, lust is a perverted reflection. This is why lusty desires are so powerful, so strong. Because they have their origin in the spiritual world. So we, we cannot neglect emotions. We cannot ignore emotions. But they exist. We just have to gradually, gradually purify them, spiritualize them. But in the beginning, they have to be recognized. They have to be dealt with in a proper way <clears throat> by showing understanding. Like if a wife, sometimes when they're very distressed, you know, too many household duties and on top, you know, taking care of the children. <clears throat> and then the husband comes home, you know, where's Prasadam? <laughs> and she might be, you know, three minutes late. And <clears throat> so at one point, it, it might be too overwhelming. And in many cases, uh, then, they, you know, they, they express their distress in, in tears. No? Mm. The tears mm. coming out. So then the husband should uh, recognize and understand uh, this particular emotion. Oh, I see my wife is you know, under, under severe distress. <clears throat> so now I, I understand that and I should give support. Rather on top of it, you know, telling her why you are crying. <laughs> why, what can I do? <laughs> on top of, of the distress <clears throat> and that, you know, distressed emotions being expressed, he even shares that with her. <laughs> the lack of uh, emotional intelligence. Mm -hmm. And same with the husband. No, sorry, the other way around. Same with the wife. She also has to understand the emotions of a man, <laughs> of a husband. Men, they express their emotions in a different way. <clears throat> they are not crying usually. <laughs> they are not crying, but you know they go to the bathroom. And then, then they cry there. <laughs> <laughs> and then when, when they come out, <laughs> or they just go to the, go to the beer bar, and just <laughs> disappear. <laughs> That's how they express their emotion. <laughs> And the wife has to understand it. <laughs> Not again, you know, on top of, of the emotional distress of the husband, the chastise him. Why you come back so late? <laughs> <laughs> so that that you know that uh, the subject matter of emotional intelligence is quite important. So in the, in the Vaishnava association, you know, we deal with these problems, we deal in a different way. Mm -hmm. you know, and the, if this is being inflicted upon the devotee by non-devotees, then a devotee just tolerates. But if uh, the same, uh, you know, uh, what insults are being inflicted by another devotee, then it has to be dealt with in a different way. Mm. You know, then one has to go to another senior devotee, talk to, you know, if you cannot work it out with a devotee who offended you, insulted you. <clears throat> First, we try to work it out you know, among ourselves. And uh, generally, this should be done in a way that we just explain ourselves. You know, we are being accused of something, insulted, and then we should just uh, explain. I understand, you know, that you think that I am this or I am that, but let me explain myself. Then you explain, your, you know, from your point of view, 
Hopefully then the other devotee will understand better. Might even apologize. And if that is not, see tolerance, again, tolerance. Mm -hmm. Rather immediately charging back, you know, shouting back, just explain yourself. That's tolerance. If someone insults me, offends me, that doesn't mean I should offend him immediately back. <clears throat> but uh, one should be tolerant, okay? There might be even some truth in it, who knows? <laughs> you know, I might not be aware of, of my nature, of my activities, of my mm. personalities. So maybe I can learn something, but if you really think there's something, you know, entirely unjust, then explain yourself, tolerate, explain yourself. If that doesn't work, then one goes to another senior devotee <clears throat> and uh, you explain and then he can talk to that devotee because he's senior, like that. So that we can adjust, you know, mm -hmm. uh, impose on a Vaishnava relationship, these verses. Mm. You know, yes. Someone insults you and you just tolerate them. <laughs> <laughs> I just tolerate them. <laughs> It has to be worked out. <laughs> it has to be clarified. Let us clarify, you know. Mm. That's a very nice word, clarify. Mm. Clarify, there might be some misunderstanding. Let us try to clarify. Yeah. What about Maharaj in the case when, when it's when you're confronted straightforwardly, like someone when straightforward in the in the relationships, they, somebody says, "Yeah, you are disturbing me in such and such a way," and then you can clarify, explain yourself. But if there is nothing like straightforward, but you just hear some backbiting and rumors, then you can't really address it. And that becomes also disturbing. What do Why you there? cannot address? Why you if, because there's no, let's say, Sudama. Sudama so, doesn't tell me anything directly to me. But it goes to, yeah, I'm just, just <laughs> an example. Oh, okay. He goes to others, <laughs> the others and tell, oh, my head is really bad. He's such a <laughs> hypocrite, whatever. And I don't know, but I hear from others. But when I ask him, what's the problem? So I don't, don't no problem. But then he continues talking back. At the, mm -hmm. at the back, so difficult to explain yourself and try to clarify it. Just an example, Makarani. Just, no just an example. <laughs> yeah. He's a, he's <laughs> no, then, then you have to explain, but you know, I mean, you're saying that you're not saying things mm -hmm. okay. you know, then, then maybe we should bring it to the audience. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> maybe he's just, you know, making it up. Mm -hmm. So let us bring that to the audience yeah. or another to the and see. And then he might, you know, he might put that devotee who is gossiping, mm. you know, on the on the on the what, on the hot seat. Hot seat. <laughs> he goes, no, no, you told me. And then, you know, then he has to confess. Mm. And sorry, uh, sometimes I might say something sometimes, but uh, usually <laughs> they don't understand me properly. <laughs> you know, all these explanations. <laughs> I meant something else. But at least it's on the table. Yeah. <laughs> Always try to clarify. Mm -hmm. If not possible, then of course one has to <clears throat> consult other senior devotees. Mm -hmm. But always try to clarify, rather being silent. Mm -hmm. You know, and you just eat it and you, you eat it up in yourself, and that's not good. Mm -hmm. Again, that will disturb us, distract us from Krishna. Mm -hmm. There's this is one verse: Krishna cannot manifest in a heart which is full of lust and anger. Krishna cannot manifest in such a heart. So it's for our own interest that we are, you know, we are as much as possible free from anger, lust, retaliation, because then we have to take birth again. We have to clean our heart, our mind, from all these material qualities such as anger, lust, retaliation, so many things. And it's only possible if you clarify, you clarify, clarify then it's off your chest, it's gone. Sure. <clears throat> and uh, again, different relationships according to different uh, 
categories of devotees, Kanishta Adhikari, Matyam, Uttam Adhikari, with different relationships. With the, uh, those of the same category, then you are very close <clears throat> to that devotee, friendship, close friendship. Those who are superior, <clears throat> you have a service relationship. You always want to serve them and learn from them. And uh, inferior devotees, you help them. You try to help them in their Krishna conscious development. The different relationships are there. This might also be sometimes a uh, source of confusion that we are not sure. You know, mm -hmm. what, mm -hmm. <laughs> what kind of relationship should I have with this devotee, that devotee, according to his level of Krishna consciousness, there might be some confusion. And then uh, because of that confusion, one uh, doesn't behave properly. Mm. Either you want to instruct someone, but you know he might be superior <laughs> <laughs> or equal. And you want to, then it's not proper to try to teach that devotee. Mm. Or someone might be superior and then you expect that he serves you. <laughs> Maybe some confusion going on. <clears throat> and another point also that related to the varna, mm -hmm. varna of devotees. You know, if if uh, other devotees of the same nature, similar nature, brahminical nature, you feel more close to that to that relationship because they have a similar nature. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> you might not feel so close to in an administrative nature of a devotee, because they always want to uh, engage everybody. You know, <laughs> can you do this? Can you do that? Why do you always ask me? <laughs> I want to manage and engage everybody. That might be sometimes disturbing you know, for, for a Brahminical devotee who just wants to think of Krishna, worship Krishna. And then, can you do this? Can you do that? Yeah. <clears throat> That's why Prabhupada mentioned, you know, half <laughs> of his work is not being done because he didn't establish properly, and not properly, but he did not uh, complete, oh. you know, 50%. He, Prabhupada felt he should have done more or should be done more to establish Varnasha. <clears throat> this is why so many devotees have relationship problems. His varnashram is not clear. My varna is not clear. His varna is not clear. And then relationship problems. Because you have a different nature. Mm. You know. The brahmana by nature is, he wants, you know, he is and wants to be peaceful. But <laughs> he's constantly associating with a you know, kshatiya nature devotee. And that uh, devotee always wants something. He wants something. <laughs> then you want it. Why do you always want something from me? <laughs> Just let me in peace. Let me alone. <laughs> Leave me alone. <laughs> Leave me alone. What have I done to you? <laughs> you always want well, What did I do to you? You're always, you're always on my case. You're always on my case. <laughs> Can we not just sit peacefully? <laughs> and Vaishya always wants to profit you know, from your association. <laughs> he wants to profit from your association. <laughs> what can I get out of you? <laughs> you still need your computer? <laughs> you want to sell it? Good price. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so many relationship problems. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They, they are so mixed, this Varna, you know, so mixed in the nature of their different personality. Mm. And if they don't understand which Varna exactly is dominating, and isn't it also? Problem, I mean. Yeah, yeah, mixture of varnas are also there, but generally one particular varna is predominant. 
<clears throat> because you always come back to, to activity service related to that predominant nature. <clears throat> like the whole Brahmanical nature, we have so many different services related to that. So you might have you know, mixed natures, but you have to perform activities. <laughs> yeah, difficult to perform mixed activities. <laughs> 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 the Brahmanical related activities, deity worship, teaching, etc. The Yagya Pavana teaching <clears throat> is all Brahminical. So there's not much of a, of a mixture. Because a, Brahm, a Brahmana, he can, uh, no, he's teaching. He can teach anything. He's intelligent. He can pick up any kind of, you know, topic, subject matter and teach. <clears throat> he's expert in teaching. So in, in, in practical activities, practical service, there's not so much of a, of a mixture. One really has to decide, <clears throat> you know, will I perform service activities in a Brahminical field of, you know, services and activities or administrative? Like, yes, so to make a decision. It's difficult to do both all the time. Only when you're on the really advanced platform, then you can do anything for Krishna, it doesn't matter what. You just want to serve. <clears throat> like Prabhupada gave his own example. In the morning, he, <clears throat> he performed rabbinical activities, he gave class, teaching, instructing, and then he went to the bank, <laughs> <laughs> and did some financial, dealing with financial matters, then he went to the printer, <laughs> organized the print so many. So Vaishnava, we can do anything for Krishna. He doesn't care. He just want to serve Krishna, please Krishna. It doesn't matter how. But usually, you know, devotees are not yet on that platform. They can do it, but in the long run, they might not be satisfied, happy. You know. Whereas a uh, Vaishnava on a transcendental platform, he's, it doesn't matter what he does, he's happy, he's satisfied. <clears throat> so that cannot be imitated. Devotees, <clears throat> basically, they have to be satisfied. Because when they're not satisfied, then again, the senses feel attracted to another satisfaction, material satisfaction, mm -hmm. because you're not satisfied. You cannot find satisfaction in devotion service in your service, then you have to find material satisfaction. So that point of, again, that point of satisfaction is also very important. We might, you know, think it is not so important anymore. What is it satisfied, not satisfied? We just want to serve Krishna. What is it satisfied? All sentimental stuff. <laughs> No, it is important. <laughs> because when we are not satisfied, dissatisfied, the Maya becomes stronger. That's the danger. So if we perform you know, devotional activities, service more according to our nature, then the tendency is to be more satisfied. That's why the Vanasham is so important. <clears throat> In relationship also, we have for life as much as possible. They, they should be of a similar nature. Then there's a lot of understanding, mutual understanding, mutual interest. Yeah. If a husband is of a Kshatya nature, wife, Brahminical nature, different. So we stop here? Yes. Thank you very much. Srimad Bhagavatam Kijai.